Few games have shaped the industry like Street Fighter II The World Warrior, the game solely responsible for the fighting genre boom of the early 90s and brainchild of eccentric game developer Yoshiki Okamoto. Known for his crazy antics and off-the-wall sense of humour, Yoshiki was sacked from Konami in 1984 after being asked to develop a driving game and instead developing a shooter. He later moved to Capcom. At Capcom he assembled a team that would in time develop one of the most important and iconic games in history. Their first project, Forgotten Worlds, was an arcade shooter. Think Contra with jetpacks. At the same time as this was being developed, another team within Capcom was developing Street Fighter, a one-on-one -on -one arcade fighting game with pads you could hit to interact with the game, an early example of motion gaming. The machine had to be recalled due to injuries caused by overly enthusiastic gamers. They released the six-button version, which had it been there from the start, some have theorised the first Street Fighter wouldn't have been such a financial disaster. The six-button version earned much better in arcades. Capcom, though, wanted a side-scroller, and not a one-on-one -on -one fighting game, to combat the success of Double Dragon. Okamoto's team made Final Fight. Originally to be titled Street Fighter 89, the stories are mixed, but the name was changed due to Street Fighter's bad reputation. The team were next to develop the game that would change the arcade scene and indeed gaming as a whole forever. They wanted to push the competitive angle. They needed a way to keep the players pumping quarters into the machine, without making the game too difficult. To have players fighting each other would remove the frustration of being beaten by an unfairly skewed difficulty curve. Instead they'd fight each other and the money would keep flowing as people tried to outdo each other. And so Street Fighter was born. The accessibility of the game meant it caught on quickly. The difficulty in pulling off special moves and the damage that they would inflict was reduced to make the game less luck based and create a more skilled and frantic fight. With the loosening of the time frame to input special moves came an unexpected bonus. The combo was created. The game had incredible art design and at the time was probably the most visually impressive title around. The music too was astounding. Created by Yoko Shimomura, who would later work on Parasite Eve and Kingdom Hearts, each tune was developed in such a way as to be catchy and memorable and reflect the fighter's country of origin. Each member of the development team had tried to one-up each other with increasingly crazy character designs. Characters like Dalsim, Blanka and Zangief each played very differently. The idea was that players would choose a favourite and develop their own style of play. Each character balanced so as to give skillful players little advantage with who they should pick. The characters were often stereotypes of their individual countries. The Japanese sumo wrestler E Honda, the Russian bear wrestler Zangief, originally called simply Vodka, or the American boxer M. Bison, who would later have his name switched so as to avoid any legal implications due to the similarity to Mike Tyson. Street Fighter 2 was an instant hit. Arcades were asking for extra units to reduce queues and waiting times to play. Machines were taking double what was predicted. Capcom couldn't keep up with demand for units and took $78 million worth of orders within the first year. A year after release, it was the most successful game of all time. The game was so huge, counterfeiters started making their own version of the game called Rainbow Edition. I remember seeing this in an arcade as a kid and being confused by Ryu throwing Hadoukins in the air. However, it could be argued that this had some influence on future Street Fighter titles. The first sequel to Street Fighter 2 is the one I have the fondest memories of. Gathering around Champion Edition in arcades when it launched, the hype was unreal. The machine would have a crowd of kids around it. It allowed you to fight as any of the four bosses from the original game. In 1992, Street Fighter 2 Turbo Hyper Fighting launched. After some resistance internally about speeding up the game, the decision was made that a faster fight could add a new level of skill and, dip and reaction time. As it turned out, the faster animation speed made for the definitive Street Fighter 2 experience. Of course, coin-op conversions were huge at the time. Capcom had an excellent relationship with Nintendo, so the first home version would be for the Nintendo's 16-bit console. I remember first playing a Japanese Super Famicom import of the game, picked up for over £100 by my cousin in an import shop in London. The game ended up giving the Super Nintendo a huge leg up in its battle with Sega's very successful Mega Drive. Of course, Turbo Edition would follow. The Mega Drive wasn't to be left out though, and it too later got its own version on the first 24 meg cartridge for the system. Special Champion Edition, was accompanied by the launch of a six-button joypad. The game itself was a solid port, despite being rushed to avoid releasing alongside the upcoming Mortal Kombat port, a game that had a huge amount of marketing and excitement behind it, and a rivalry that still exists to this day. 
For all Mortal Kombat's brilliantly gory and visceral appeal, it would never play as well as Street Fighter. The console ports of Street Fighter were unsurprisingly huge successes. The game became available on all manner of systems, including the Amiga, the Atari ST, the Commodore 64, and ZX Spectrum. And even later, the Game Boy. The game had multiple spin-offs and sequels, and it forever changed the video game landscape. Competitors took turns in creating something that would catch gamers' competitive attention in the same way as Street Fighter 2 had. Samurai Showdown, Fighters History, Fatal Fury, Killer Instinct, and of course Mortal Kombat, among many others, were released. There was a terrible movie of Street Fighter, and even a terrible game of that terrible movie. And even now, Street Fighter games are still being made. Street Fighter 4, released during the last generation, has a huge competitive scene surrounding it, and Street Fighter 5 will launch next year. The games have got more complicated, but the core remains the same. Two players pitching their skill and reaction times against one another, and what could be more fun than that? Training ahead of you.